This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are both from the Salvation Army. I have Amy and Kevin Cedarval. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So when I open up the Alpena News today, when I listen to the TV station, when I listen to the radio, I hear about a wonderful donation that you folks got in your red kettles. Yeah, it was so much fun. You know, it's this time of year, counting kettles and stuff it's a blessing but it also gets to be a little monotonous sometimes but we're sitting in the the, the room with our volunteers and you know the first one comes out a little little bundle all paper clipped together and you know then you realize it's five hundred dollars it's like Woo -hey, yay and then when the second one's found it's like oh my gosh and then it kind of becomes do i have one and you, start, <laughs> you start digging down looking because it's just kind of that that extra fun that it's you know you think about and you you think about the fact that you know somebody cared enough to to do that and you know it's just a, a very big blessing it's a two thousand dollar donation yeah. yeah wow and you know kevin i always say alpine is a town that gives till it feels good That's and right. you do the most good with the money give me an idea of what this money will be used for well right now of course we're, we're in the middle of our christmas efforts and uh we're uh trying to get ready for all of that we're distributing everything on the 20th okay uh, so all of the angel tree gifts, all the adoptive families, all of the, the food donations are, are just about ready to be done. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, that's a great day. It's, it's just a lot of fun, um, a lot of volunteers and just uh, enjoying. It's, it's a great opportunity. So that's, that's one of the big things we do um, at this time. And, but that money also helps us throughout the year uh, to survive, you know, the, the rest of the year, that's about 25% of our, our yearly budget we raise just at Christmas. So it helps us take care of uh, all the utilities and all of the, the social service appointments and paying for staff and everything. So it's, it's a, a great know, Kevin, blessing. A lot of people take, it, take things for granted. I have a friend that I work with who had a, a wish list from her church. And one of the items, a little, uh, I think a 10-year-old girl, all she asked for was a toothbrush, toothpaste, and deodorant that's what she asked mm -hmm. for those are things that we just take that are always there in the shelf yeah. in the cupboard for granted I mean and that's what she asked for she didn't ask for toys she didn't ask for clothing that's all she really wanted and, and I'm sure it wasn't because she had all the other stuff it's just things that's probably she was lacking and thought mm -hmm. hey maybe I can get these items we we love getting those little families that uh, we've had one that came in this year that she came in right at the end of the day and it was you know we were all ready to check out and we, we ended up staying an extra 30 minutes just to work with her but it was it was one of those families that just makes you feel good and uh, it's it's always great to get those those special families that, that just need a little extra help you know my motto in life has always been there by the grace of god go i and you never know from one year to the next what your situation's going to be you know a death in a family a, a divorce in a family a job loss um, you know, it's having to move somewhere, losing your house. There's so many things that can put people in a spot where they yeah. need help. And it's just so wonderful that there's organizations like the Salvation Army that we know and can trust that are there to help people. It is. And we, we're, we're very conscious of the fact that we are working with other people's money. Um, you know, yes, the donations come into us and therefore it's, you know, the Salvation Army money. But we know we couldn't do it without those donations. And, um, you know... So because of that, we try very hard to do the best we can with them and to, to make them stretch as far as possible um, because, you know, we know that's what people want. And year after year, we, we understand the importance of what we're doing because I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to a volunteer who's helping bag up groceries or helping walk food out to a car, and, and they simply say, you know, when I was a kid, the Salvation Army was there for us at Christmas or... You know, we had a fire, and, and the Salvation Army came and, and uh, just was a blessing to us. So that's, that's our goal, is to, to create those, those future volunteers and just to help, uh, help as many people as we can in, in whatever situation. And Amy, comes. we want to let people know that it's definitely not too late to help. Absolutely not. Um, we're still, we're boxing up food tomorrow. Okay. Um, but even if food drives come in beyond that, we use it in our pantry throughout the course of the year. When people are going uh, short on food, we, we give them, you know, a food order. Um, you know, toys, we can still use toys. 
uh, to help make sure that we get everything covered for each family, each child. Um, we can use volunteers. We use volunteers throughout the year too. We don't, yes. you know, we're, we're more visible. We're <laughs> visible in the Christmas and we probably have, we, well not probably, we definitely have more large group efforts available at Christmas. But, um, you know, I was just talking to the lady, lady yesterday that was looking to, to volunteer after Christmas. And, you know, we use a lot of our work as volunteer, um, you know, people who help us stock the pantry, that's volunteer, people who help us answer the phones, that's volunteer. Um, one of the big things we're looking at getting started is having some life skills courses. Um, and so we are definitely looking for people who have a skill that they want to share um, and can do a class, whether that be parenting, budgeting, um, money stretching, couponing, um, cooking. Uh, computer skills. Computer skills, any of those things that unfortunately some of us just take for granted. Oh, yes. Because they've always been part of our lives. But um, what we have noticed more and more is when you get the generational poverty, people don't know those things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to cook with real food. They only know how to cook with the canned food or, you know, so it's, it's those things that we thought we need to start, start getting some of these skills out to people so that they have a better knowledge base so that they can help themselves. Um, because that's a big thing that, that we're, we're huge on is, is um, you know, we want to give a hand up, not a handout. Exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to, it's far easier to give the handout. Um, just give them what they need and then see them again next month. But we want people to be able to start standing on their own two feet to give them what they need to get through so that they can then better themselves, their situations and their, for their, their some, excuse me, for themselves and their children. And, and just let people know that, you know, if they're, they only have a dollar to give, we'll take that dollar. Absolutely. When you add it to all the other dollars, it does add up quickly. Um, come shop at the thrift store, donate yes. things to the thrift store, call you about doing life skills or about ringing a bell, mm -hmm. you know, just get out there and ring the bell for an hour or two. It's fun to get to see all your friends and neighbors yeah. and have a good time. I don't know if I'd want to do it with the cold temperatures we're experiencing yeah. right now. But, but this still, morning we actually were questioning, are we going to send them out? <laughs> there's indoor, there's indoor spaces too. So. Yes. Yes. Well, and I want to thank you both so much for what you do in our community. I know that you're out there reaching out, touching all the families and the people that need help. Thank you so very much from all of us here at WBKB-TV, and we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Merry, thank Christmas. You, Merry Christmas. Thank you. I'll be back right back with Mary Beth Stutzman following these messages. Hi, welcome back. I'm with Mary Beth Stutzman from the Visitors and Convention Bureau. Good morning, Mary Beth. Good morning. So the Visitors and Convention Bureau, I mean, we thought a year ago was a fantastic year, all the things that you did, but a 19, or 2016 was a great year. It was. It was a great year. It just keeps getting better and busier. I keep waiting for the slowdown, and it's, I'll be here four years in February, and I haven't, haven't experienced a slowdown yet, so <laughs> I think I have to get over that. Um, but 2016 was a great year. Um, we introduced about four years ago a new method of talking about ourselves, uh, a method that just fits who we are. Um, a community that is surrounded by natural beauty and relaxed outdoor adventure, but also history and heritage. And that message has really been serving us well. So this past year we've seen, over the last four years, we've seen great incremental growth, but this past year our marketing is when we expected it would take hold, and it did. We were up 23% this wow. summer over last year. So it was phenomenal. And give me a highlight of some of the wonderful things that happened. Well, this year was an exciting year. Um, starting uh, last February, uh, we received a great designation for three of our state parks, our local state parks, Neglagon, Thompson's Harbor, and Rockport State Recreation Area. They were all designated as dark, dark sky preserves, which it, it seems like a no-brainer for us. I mean, I, right. I live in the middle of town and I can go out at night and I see the stars in the middle of town. Uh, but there are so many places that you can't do that anymore. And we have entire generations of children growing up in metro areas that have never seen the night sky, <laughs> ever. Stars are something they read about in books or see on TV. They don't experience it themselves. So places like this, like Alpena, really are special and unique. Uh, and it took an act of the Michigan legislature to designate these as dark sky preserves. So it's very significant. And you did some events out there where people could actually go and, and see what's happening. Yes, um, Besser Museum is a big proponent of, of this with their planetarium and doing programming that matches what you can experience in the outdoors. And then also um, working with the friends groups of the local state parks to host events like meteors and s'mores. And then we also sprinkle in a little yoga. Um, I even did some 
uh, some readings from some of my favorite naturalists, and I thought I would have maybe myself and my husband just as a, <laughs> a sympathy <laughs> participant. But we had we had about a dozen people Amazing. that wanted to listen to that, and then 500 people that had come out just to view the meteor shower. So it's pretty great. It is okay. What else happened? Oh goodness. Well, we had a return visit um, from some old friends from the Outdoor Channel. Yes. We were the first community that Major League Fishing has ever been to twice. Yes, so they came uh, a couple of years ago and brought professional bass anglers with them. And, and when they were here, the experience was great in itself. But the really big deal was when Alpina starred on national television on the Outdoor Channel in front of millions of viewers, um, focusing on bass fishing. Um, Alpina is a, is a fantastic location, a destination for bass fishing. And growing up here, we, we might take it for granted. Yes. It's like, oh, of course, I fish every day. Or, you really can fish every day in Alpina, but um, the quality of fish, the health of the fish, how prolific they are, and just the variety of places that you can catch them is really significant. And the easy access to all of our lakes. You know, some yeah. well, I've been out of town or out of state, and it's a hot day, and you want to go swimming. Try to find a place where you can go swimming or a or a public it's not launch overly area. crowded. Yeah, or a public yeah. beach. It's really difficult it, sometimes. It is. Um, yep. So. Major League Fishing will be featured once again on new bodies of water this time, and it will air in April. So we'll get the word out about that, and we'll have some viewing parties, locations where you can go and watch it if you don't get the Outdoor Channel, okay. and, and you can join in on the fun. And last time we did this, it sparked a whole um, path, a journey of other shows that have come here and, and taped. Um, it, we have professional bass anglers bringing their families here for vacation, which, you know, in some respects, I, I think that says that speaks more highly of what we have to offer than being a, a generic tourist destination. If we have professional people seeking us out because we are known for a quiet, calm respite, that speaks volumes of what we have to offer. And, and we're seeing it in our numbers of people coming into the community as well in the summertime. And so 2017 will bring some more fishermen back, do you think? Oh yes, uh, we, it's just great. It's a great asset. Um, our fisheries are wonderful and we focus on things that we know we're not going to um, stress or strain. Bass fishing, um, bass fishermen throw, throw their catch back. back. Um, the Kiss other, them first usually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other one that we focus on a bit is walleye fishing because we know the population is very healthy. Yes. Um, there are others that we promote but not as heavily because we know that we're, we might not be the best place that you can go for that. It doesn't mean that you can't come here and experience uh, a, a great um, experience with that, but we know that there are some things we do really great and we focus on those. You know, and the Visitors Convention Bureau is a lot like our Chamber of Commerce. I know that you're out there, I know how hard you're working, and I know what you're doing to bring people to our community, but sometimes our local people don't realize everything that goes on behind the scenes. Yes, um, the C when you say CVB, Convention of Visitors Bureau, no one really knows what that means. And in some ways that's okay because we already live here, so we don't really have to understand it. Um, in the ins and outs, or, or what we do every day, or how many hours we work, and um, all of the programs that we help support um, because our work happens outside of the region. Right. Not just outside of the community or outside of the county, but outside of the region. So we're focusing our efforts on the state as a whole, the Great Lakes region, and then specific target market audiences across the United States and Canada. And you know, I know you do a lot with um conventions and people who want to come to our town providing information and now we're going to have some more hotel rooms so we'll be able to get some larger conventions mm -hmm. too. Yep that's always been a struggle. Um, we struggle with bringing in a little bit larger group because we don't have enough places mm -hmm. for them. Um, we've been successful a couple of times with certain events because people have been willing to camp at a campground or stay in cottages but that's Professional um, conventions, they don't, they don't always want right. to do that. They want everything to be very consolidated in, in the center of the city and hotel rooms so that they have access to convention um, space, meeting rooms, and things like that. So um, this will be able to elevate our standing and, and able to attract some larger convention events. So if someone is, is on a, a group and they're looking for a place to hold a large conference, they could contact you and you could get them started. Yes, absolutely. We help with that. We, we help with a little bit of everything. So we are a destination marketing organization. So most of our efforts are 
focused on marketing, advertising, publicity, things like that outside of the area. Um, our secondary uh, mission is to help connect people with resources in the community. If they want to come and visit, if they want to bring a group here or an event, um, we help connect the dots. We do behind the scenes logistics. We offer um, advice and, and support along those lines. We also help the community understand what it means to be a, a functioning tourism destination because we haven't always operated like that. Right, and people don't realize, you know, just everybody going about their day-to-day -day life don't realize we are a wonderful tourist destination. Yeah, and tourism. And we want them to come. Yep. They spend more money than anyone else does. Well, and tourism dollars circulate um, at a greater, more robust um, propensity than, than other dollars. Um, local dollars, we share back and forth between each other. Right. But when tourists come in, they bring money, leave it at our doorstep, and then they go home and they're not a uh, drain on the tax resources. Right. Um, that money circulates faster throughout the community. It's like a fresh influx. It's, a, it's, it's an industry. It's an import, actually. Um, tourism is one of the community's largest imports. We just um, don't see it as an industry because it's kind of it's silent. Yeah, People come yes. and they go and they're just having fun while they're here. Nobody views that as an industry, really, but it, it is. And we, and we offer a great service to people, everyone, from people smiling on the sidewalk yes. to offering a great customer service interaction at a restaurant. Um, it takes everyone, and we do a great job all the way around the community. I agree. We're out of time. I want to thank you very much for being here. Merry Christmas to you and Merry your staff. Christmas. And look forward to hearing some great things next year. Thank you. Thanks. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings everyone and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, I'm president of Alpena Community College and I'm pleased to have as our guests this morning ACC art instructors Lori Wade, Rose Voida, and Jean Ryman. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. So recently, Friday night, this past Friday night, we had a, a ACC student art show. Tell the viewers a little bit about it and um, and what struck you about it, some of the history, anything you want to fill in? Well, I was trying to think. Um, you mentioned to me that that was one of the questions you may ask us. And we've had, um, we had a show this past Friday, and um, we have a student art exhibit the last um, Friday of every semester. And I want to say that this is probably around the 54th, 55th student art exhibit. Um, since, since I've been working at the college. And what it is is an exhibit where all areas um, of every class um, in the fine arts department, students have the opportunity to show their work and they usually get three or four pieces each. So you have students from sculpture, um, drawing, painting, um, computer generated imaging, uh, beginning photography, advanced photography ceramics, all the areas, and the students are all in there working all semester long, but they really don't get an idea of what's going on across the hall. And then all of a sudden, the week before the show, all of the students come together, they start hanging the work, mm -hmm. and then you have the opening night, and you invite the whole community. And we usually have about 1,500 to 2,000 people come through. I would say we had a little bit lighter load mm -hmm. this semester. Yeah. Yeah. But it was nice, you know, um, and it was actually really quite nice because people could get through the hallway for a change. Um, they had the space to look at the artwork and enjoy it. And it was, it was a very good time. We had a very nice turnout. And the, the, the students that exhibit during our, I think they're always wowed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jean, what do you think the students get out of it? Well, when you look at it from a distance, because you're the instructor, You've been there, done that, you've exhibited, and so forth. But what it really means to them is like, there I am. I'm on the wall. Yeah. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. All this work that I put in, yeah. and we've got it all framed up, or it's all properly set up and everything else. So it's a, it's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. and, and it inspires them to, to go forward e even, even more. So I think that's probably the top thing that they get out of it. And, and people get to see it and comment, and they, they enjoy that. It, that is true. I've attended as many years as I, I have been able to, and I've enjoyed it every single time. I, I think the students really benefit from, from the discipline of getting their work presented and then having people uh, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Rose, what was your uh, take from uh, Friday's um, show? I guess, uh, well, from Friday's show and previous shows, I can just say, because I was a past student at ACC, and um, seeing the students now that I'm there working, um, 
it is it is really just nice to see all the hard work put together through the whole semester and they actually get to see it up on the wall and get to present it to their family to their friends and everybody else in the community and mm -hmm. um yeah they really enjoy it it's actually it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. and acc art students uh um you know they they move on to some prestigious mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. um give give the folks a, a sense for that well we we are um a transferable degree and um the way i explain it to especially um incoming students and parents of incoming students is what we're looking to do is to make sure that those students have 30 credits of their academics and then they also have almost as many credits in the fine arts so that they're walking away um, with a background in design which is a foundation course that they'd have to take at a four-year institution they have to be knowledgeable of photoshop um, they have to have a background in apple computers um, because that's industry standard. Yes. Um, they have to know drawing. And one of the great things with Jean's class is you can walk into uh, College for Creative Studies or down to Kendall, and you know what he's doing in his foundation drawing class is the exact same thing they're doing there. I mean, it's, it's the standard those students are able um, to compete. And also they get a color aspect, they get a three-dimensional aspect. and. The, I think the most important thing that they do is they put together a portfolio. And that's what allows them, even though if they've gotten outstanding grades, maybe some that aren't quite so good, they have that portfolio of work to back them up. So if they've taken Jean's class, they have um, either on a flash drive or a disc, a section that's drawing, mm -hmm. a section that's possibly combined with design, and maybe painting, but they've chosen what their emphasis is, and they have one disc of that, and then they put forward um, a group of work that is their best of their best, and that's how they apply for scholarships. And they've gotten some. Yeah, yeah. Um, they usually, and Jean, Jean, I don't know, I know Jean and I, and then Joe Donna, who teaches CGI, um, have gone down um, with students as they have portfolio reviews. Yeah. And um, they get, well, this past year we had a student that received 45,000, um, one that had 25,000, one 35,000, so it was just kind of that nice. But those are students headed to the College for Creative Studies, but we also have students that head off to Northern, and Northern doesn't have the same type of transferable mm -hmm. degrees, no. but they're still receiving that 3,000. 2,000, 4,000 renewable. Um, so they're good. It they're is good. good. So we got about one minute left. I'm curious to know, is it just art for art majors or is there an opportunity or a, a way to expand the uh, kind of horizons of, of folks that are in other technical programs? Well, Larry and I have discussed and we're in, we're in agreement. Uh, because if you take a look at the total number of students who come through, it's a small percentage, relatively speaking, who are going on to art careers. They're going to be uh, fine artists or, or, or teachers or, or commercial artists, but some of them are going to go into other industries. They may work for Apple, uh, they may work for Besser, they may work for Ford or some small company. But what, what these companies are looking for are people who can think creatively. You know, and I hate that term out of the box, but that's exactly what it's mm -hmm. all about. And, and when we, we take a look at education down through uh, all the way to, to let's say, uh, to kindergarten, do our curriculums really center on or really emphasize creative thinking? And I know because you know, I, I taught for 32 years at the high school, and we never had a class per se that said, okay, now this is all creative thinking. You, you had classes like math, and the math problems had to be solved, but the funny thing was, the answers were always the same, year after year after year, where our students uh, seek out different answers to things, and that's what industry, that's what they want. Right. And thank you for, uh, thank yeah. you for uh, what you do for ACC students, mm -hmm. and uh, the opportunities that you present uh, 
for them to be artists and uh, to succeed in fields that are beyond art. I appreciate you coming in and mm -hmm. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yep. And thank, thank you, you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town Furniture and Set Design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.